And last but not least, the two major additional health risks linked with vegan and vegetarian diets are osteoporosis and bone fractures due to vitamin D insufficiency and calcium insufficiencies, as well as various anemias due to iron deficiency, as well as B12 deficiencies. Uh, I will throw in there, we know that creatine is a conditionally essential nutrient. We know that about 17% of Americans consume no creatine whatsoever. Why is that? Because creatine is found in animal-based products. It's found in breast milk. It's found in red meat, a little bit in chicken. The highest source of creatine, if you want to uh, ingest herring, actually. Herring has 11 grams of creatine per kilogram of uh, raw herring. So that's the greatest source. Um, Grass-fed beef, for example, would have between five and six grams of creatine per kilogram. So even if you're eating a pound of red meat per day, you may be only getting about 2.5 grams of creatine. So let's talk a little bit more about the big push towards a vegan or vegetarian diets from our medical institutions, including the American College of Cardiology, the American Heart Association, and more. In their 2019 guidelines on the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease endorsed a plant-based diet. And the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics stated that an appropriately planned vegan diet is healthful and nutritionally adequate and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of chronic diseases. And they say that it's appropriate for all stages of the life cycle, which I think is irresponsible, almost public public health malpractice because we know that DHA, doca sahexaenoic acid, this is an omega-3 fat that is really critically important for brain development. If you're eating a vegan or vegetarian diet, mom and dad are eating that way and there's insufficient levels of this critically important long chain omega-3 fat that is important for helping baby's brains develop and improving cognition and focus and reducing the prevalence of ADD and ADHD and put possibly even autism, that is not a good thing. Also, we know that iodine is gonna be void as we talked about in a vegan or vegetarian diet. So I think there's a lot more nuance that is lacking from our health institutions that is influencing people to go vegan or vegetarian diet. But even as the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics say, a lot of folks are not approved appropriately planning their vegan or vegetarian diets. And I will tell you that even when I did short, you know, two or three months stints on a vegan or vegetarian diet that was appropriately planned, soaking and sprouting nuts and seeds and grains and making sure that things are fermented and doing the like, I found a lot of gastrointestinal side effects and consequences. And when you hang out or socialize with vegans or vegetarians, they're open and honest about their digestive issues, uh, burping, gassing, bloating, and the consequences of this because humans are in between. We're, we're omnivores. We're in between carnivores and herbivores in terms of our anatomical futures and the morphology of our gastrointestinal tract.